2016 as a science. So I just have a couple here, oh, four or five. Uh, so this one I, I touched a little bit in, but again, it was a little while ago. It's probably when I first get the books, I tend to read maybe the first five or six pages just to see what's in there. Uh, so this is The Reenchantment of the World by Morris Bergman. And the basic, it's, it's a bit of a critique on science, and I guess it's a little bit, it's afraid of the very scientific world that we're moving into and maybe making us more into these mechanical beasts and trying to fixate all our our behaviors and oh this is what science says and we must do what science says and make turning people into auton automatons right and moving away from this natural uh, uh, kind of approach to life environmental maybe um, so I'd be interested to see what they what they say because I don't really tend to see this side but I am aware of the kind of the brave new world the dangers of this side Here's a book on archaeology, Gods, Graves, and Scholars, The Story of Archaeology by C.W. Surum. I don't really have many books on archaeology, so I thought I would get one. And I, I like these ones. I don't really I don't really want to read textbooks, right? But I do like ones that are written for the public, and they've got plates in the middle of the book, so you get all kinds of pictures and stuff. And um, so... And it is kind of neat. Like I was reading a bit about this, talking about some tomb. There was um, Tutankhamun, I think is how you pronounce it, the Golden Tomb, uh, an unearthing of ancient Troy. You know, they were looking for that for a long time, and they thought it actually was mythical. But anyways, it I think, it, and so far it was kind of neat. It's it's somewhat adventurous, but it's also very it's scholarly. It's not just a, an adventure story, but so. Um, I, yeah, so that's good. I, like I said, I don't have a lot of archaeology, so I don't mind reading that kind of stuff. This has been actually very good. I'm into this, maybe 10 page, 20 pages. Uh, Sleepwalkers by Arthur Kosler. You may know Arthur Kosler wrote uh, Darkness at Noon, which is a dystopian uh, fiction. But he also wrote A History of Science, and this is actually very readable, very interesting. Uh, a History of Man's Changing Vision of the Universe. And that, I think, is, I like the subtitle very much. That is what you get out of science is like how you view the world and even the even the ancient Greek uh, mythology, all those gods and all that. That was an approach to understand the world. That was a method of trying to make more certain our our existence and being less fearful of nature. If we can create beings that we worship and somewhat influence with our sacrifices right well science has taken over now i guess religion for a long time took over religion is still with us for some people uh but most of the i think it's atheism is growing pretty rapidly uh but anyway science is a new world view and it is another way of looking at the universe so i'm i and it, like i said it's been very readable and interesting so okay now on kind of space stuff Here's uh, Carl Sagan, The Cosmic Connection in Extraterrestrial Perspective. This is supposed to be about how we might interact with extraterrestrials, other species out there, and what that might be like, and relations with them, and how they might see us. Uh, so, and I haven't touched it yet, I haven't read into it yet, but it's, all, it's got actually all kinds of pictures throughout. So, something like that. This is a. Uh, Volcano. It says Mariner 9 mosaic of four photographs of the largest known volcano in, in the solar system. So, anyways, the mountains of Mars is one of the chapters. And related to that, the last one here, Robert Zubrin, Entering Space, Creating a Spacefaring Civilization. Robert Zubrin also wrote, it's at the very bottom here, The Case for Mars, which I have, and I don't know if I finished it. But I, I wrote, I read it, a, I read maybe three quarters of it a long time ago, maybe 10 years ago. And it was basically saying, it was, I think, written in the 80s or something. It was basically saying, look, we have all the technology to go to Mars. What's going on? Let's go. And um, of course, we haven't really done that yet, at least not with humans. Uh, so this is another one of his books. And he's talking more about what will it be like when we're out there? Uh, what kinds of things might we. Um, have like what kinds of things that we know about 
the earth in terms of nation and nation politics that might be related to species and species politics or what would you call it interstellar relationships and how transportation might work between planets and so this is the next frontier and i think we need to be exploring this and i know a lot of science fiction writers explore that we've got tons of experiments that literature writers have done and even like star trek you can think of star trek uh, the next generation or i guess all of it the original series with uh, kirk and the next generation with picard and Voyager and Deep Space Nine and Enterprise and all the and all the movies and those are all attempts to think about how space civilization would work and being a not just a pre warp society or pre warp civilization as we are now, right? Uh so I think it's very interesting and timely that there are people writing books about how this might work because that is the next frontier and I want to get there and it would be really cool if in my lifetime the first human baby was born on Mars and they would be a Martian. I think that would be really neat. Uh, I kind of hope that happens. So it's another kind of book that's exploring those, those kinds of topics and what might happen. Okay, those are new books for spring 2016 in science.